Good day to our retailers and allied industries. This is Raf Layosa, founder and CEO of RetailGate Technologies. And welcome to Let's Talk Retail, a digital initiative of the Philippine Retailers Association, featuring key movers and shakers to motivate and inspire the dynamic retail sector. Now, for this episode, we have such a treat for you as our guest today is not just a man of retail, but also a best-selling author. But before we formally introduce him, don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated on the latest from PRA. Now, you can also watch the previous episodes by heading to the Let's Talk Retail playlist. Watch it on demand anytime, anywhere. Now, to finally kick off our conversation, our guest definitely loves retail. He has led retail teams for some of America's most prominent brands, and he's inspired thousands of store employees and traveled relentlessly across the country to sit and listen to what they have to say. From a part-time sales associate to a vice president of stores, he has put in the hard work that a retail career requires and has written the book, Retail Pride to share what he learned along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on screen, Mr. Ron Thurston. Hi, good morning. Good morning from New York City. Hey, good morning. How's it going there in New York, Ron? It's really fantastic. You know, we are, the city is coming back to life more and more every day. And we are in a really great um, place of business coming back in retail, which, of course, as you said, I love and love to talk about. Oh, that's a really good sign. I mean, we're, we're slowly seeing uh, more and more of the world to really open up and, and recover and bounce yeah. back from, from the impact of COVID-19 since 2020, right? And uh, we'd love yeah. to hear more of what you think about that. But let's jump right into um, what we're talking about right now, that wonderful book that you have, which you, you titled uh, Retail Pride. Uh, there, you have it right there. There, I have a copy of it here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I love that book. It's, it's amazing. It's, you talked about um, having that pride in, in that accidental career in retail. And I just want to highlight that immediately. You know, you mentioned it's a, about having that pride in your accidental career in retail. What do you mean by accidental career, really? When I really thought about the industry and thought about how many people I had met, you said in your introduction, I've traveled around the country and, and, and led some of the biggest teams, but it's a very common conversation for someone to kind of sit down and have a touch base with me or an interview, or I'm opening a new store. And often their first line is, well, you know, this getting into retail was kind of an accident. You know, and that maybe they were studying it um, in, in university, but often it was kind of a part-time job that turned into something then that they loved, that then uh, became a really exciting career. And so I wanted to actually take the opportunity to say, let's celebrate this accidental career. And part of putting pride back into our industry, back into retail is saying, it's actually not an accident. It's quite intentional about... Mm -hmm choosing this as a career and look at all the options that are available to you. That's all the different kinds of businesses, all the career choices, the store to corporate and, and the mental shift that can happen when you say, this is now intentionally my career um, and recognize that it may have started accidentally, but let's kind of change that attitude. And that seems to really resonate with people in the industry. That's amazing. And, and the way that that resonates with people in the industry, uh, I'd like to think that that actually comes from your very own experience. Would you tell us more about that? I mean, when you think of that accidental career from how you started your career in retail, would you walk us through even briefly, what was it like for you? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so I'm from California, you know, here in the US. I grew up in Northern California and I, uh, my family owned a construction company that built grocery stores. And I, you know, it was a really exciting industry, but I knew that I wanted to do something that was probably more traditional retail versus grocery. And so I studied fashion design and I studied retail management. And I did have a, a career in, in, in fashion design for a few years, very early on. Um, I do love fashion and I've worked for some of, you know, really great fashion brands, uh, but, one of my first opportunities was in a department store in the US 
called Liberty House, oh. uh, which is part of Macy's and you know well-known brands. But I fell in love with this idea of the entrepreneurial spirit that happens in retail and that whether you're in sales, store manager, department manager, multi-store leader, the opportunity to build your own business and to um, find those opportunities to connect with your team and your client. I love that entrepreneurial spirit. So it, I kind of it had the intention of being a famous fashion designer. And what I realized is actually, I love the retail side so much more. And that I like the energy that you get from the teams, the energy you get from the customer, the, our ability to just connect with so many different people inspired me. So that department store turned into the gap. Um, and I spent about you know, 10 years from sales to assistant manager, store manager, district manager, corporate visual merchandising, and my career continued from there. Uh, but it was very much an accident that I have then now done for you know, 30 years. I love what you just said that it's really that entrepreneurial spirit, which uh, pretty much, like you said, it, it actually is inherent in, in the retail industry. Can you tell us more about that? Um, let's unpack that. How is that entrepreneurial spirit ingrained in the very industry of retail? Mm, I, it, I actually think where it begins is the fact that there's no there's no one way to have a great retail business that every, every city, every you know, different part of our industry, whether it's entry price point, you know, pharmacy, grocery, clothing, luxury, they all function slightly different. And, and there's no one way to do it well. And so you would say to yourself, well, then I have to figure this out for the best opportunity for my customer and my store for my company the best version of that and it actually requires a lot of entrepreneurial spirit to say how am i going to do this how am i going to recreate um, and build a business when you don't really have a manual in front of you you have to like and you have to learn it on the job mm -hmm. you have to, you don't um it's different than say you work in accounting or you work in um, an office that requires a certain skill set. Retail is one that says it's open to all. Everyone can work here. It just requires um, your ability to learn and and be curious, be empathetic, um, and 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 that spirit of how to do it is very live and well, live and well um, in our industry. And I I love that about it because every day you have the opportunity to do it again. I mean, that, that's really beautiful. I mean, the very nature of, of the job allows that space for creativity and, and to just do it and figure it out along the way. There's no, it's not as structured as other industries or careers right. are, right? And that's right. really where the, the entrepreneurial angle comes in. And yeah. that leads me to another point that you actually stressed on in your book, um, where it's important to have that hustle and grit. Now, what does that mean for the retail professional? <laughs> and, so, and they can be a bit of controversial words, you mm -hmm. know, when you say hustle, that you, know, that you hustle to get it done. But I use it in a very complimentary way mm -hmm. and say the most successful people that I know in the industry, whether it's in sales, in leadership, in ownership, are people who just love the business and are, are ready to hustle, ready to move fast, ready to make quick decisions. And that, that kind of spirit of grit of like, I'm not giving up. Mm -hmm. And we all know, you know, what the last 15 months has been. And a, a lot of people had to say, you know what, this is tough. It's never been so difficult, but the grit in me is not going to give up. And we're going to continue to to engage, we are going to hustle. We're going to find ways to make money. We're going to find ways to keep our team engaged, and we're going to keep this going, no matter what happens. And and in terms of having that hustle and grit type of of, of a mindset uh, ingrained in in retail, how do you see that manifesting um, in in retail employees, and how can leaders really? Uh, not just inspire that, but even more cultivate it and sustain that kind of mindset. Mm. You know, I, th I think 
great leadership in retail is really about building an opportunity for everyone to feel like they belong. And when you, when you feel like you belong, that you're part of the team, you're part of an industry, you, you feel welcome, that you immediately feel empowered to have that hustle. Mm-hmm. And I think so great leaders say um, that are highly curious and, and empathetic. I talk a little bit in the, ba- the book about three pillars of retail success, no matter what your job is. Mm-hmm. I think all of us, you know, from CEO to part-time sales, that you have to be highly empathetic mm-hmm. and be able to be curious and listen and to be able to focus because the, the focus in retail is all over the place. Every day, you don't know what's gonna happen. Box is coming through the door, you know, traffic is high, traffic is low, you know, customer service challenges, inventory problems, every day it's different. And mm-hmm. the ability to focus and say, here's what we need to accomplish today. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm gonna to listen to my team and be very curious. I'm empathetic to how they are experiencing whatever's happening in their life. And that's really important today. Um, that that's, that's the way I, I believe you inspire everyone around you to do better every day. And you have that morning meeting and you get them going, you get them rallied, and then that hustle begins. And yeah. I, I can't imagine a day where you didn't do that well and you didn't have a great day in business. Like I love that, you- just like the firing them up. Yeah, that is very true. And I, and I love what you said that there's uh, every single day in retail is actually different. So yeah. by nature, retail is very dynamic and, and it's, it's, you'll, it's never monotonous, right? It, it can never be a monotonous uh, industry because it's right. always changing. It's always evolving every single day. I love that. Uh, I love it too. You mentioned the, about that, the, the, the pillars of actually navigating through that very dynamic environment of retail is uh, having that uh, empathy, curiosity, and focus. Could you tell us more about that and how can retail leaders really cultivate these three pillars in the team? Yeah, of course. You know, so empathy is really the ability to meet people where they are and understand um, and be... Um, what's the right, you know, be empathetic to what they're experiencing. So I would say, you know, through conversation, through, through working together, you really learn to understand what's happening in someone's life. What, what are they experiencing in their career? Where do they want to go? What is, what are their, their dreams and how can you as a leader help them get there? Uh, And think it's that human connection that's mm-hmm. so important on, on the retail side with your customer, but it's mm-hmm. also more important with your team. And I do think that that empathy is, is where it starts. And the curiosity is across the board in our industry. Are you curious about your customer? What does your customer actually need, want? Why are they in your store? Um, what does your team need? What, um, what is the company expecting of you? So that continuous like, at, be able and have the, the constant drive to be curious, learn what's happening in our industry, what new technology is happening in our industry, what are new, new retail models, and that the best people that work in our industry are ones that are highly curious about what's happening. Um, and that, that's at every level. You know, a great, you know, I love stories of great sales teams that were really curious about um, company history and, you know, having led a brand like St. Laurent, that was part of being curious about the history of the brand helps you become a better salesperson. And because you're more knowledgeable and you can, you're a better sale, you're, you're better at connecting, uh, through your own curiosity. And then that focus, like I said before, every day, something's going to get thrown at you. Just expect it. Don't expect it to, to, end the same way you started the day and but have those moments of your ability to sit and say what do I need to accomplish what what did I not get done today what what are priorities and how can I finish my day Uh, that's a you know that's a learned skill not everyone has that 
but I think it's a pillar of success in our industry. That is very true. I mean, those are really powerful building blocks of expertise in retail, right? But I just want to zoom in closer first on, on the two pillars right there in terms of curiosity and focus. How exactly do you balance that uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, when we th- you mentioned about curiosity, that's how you can actually cultivate more innovation when we learn more from our customers and what's really new out there, right? Uh, right. But also when we look at focus, we have to, how do you find that balance that you're not chasing the next Chinese thing every now and then, but at the same time with the focus, you have the right balance of focus that you're not going through a tunneled vision into just one direction. Mm-hmm. How do you that's find a, balance there? That's a really great question because you're right. There, there is so much changing and happening in our industry that it is easy to lose that focus. You could say, oh, I need, you know, a buy online, pick up in store. I need RFID. I need all this different technology um, can throw you off. And so I could not agree more. You would say, mm-hmm. well, what, what is our ultimate goal? Is our goal here to find new ways to connect? Is it to grow a business faster? Is it to become more omni-channel? Like, what do we want to accomplish? And then what are the tools to get there? And to, to kind of stay true to it, but, but curious at the same time and say, well, this is our business model today. But could it evolve in the next five years to also include this? And I think it's that balance of focus and curiosity would say, I know what I need to accomplish, but I'm also open to learning more. And you're, you're right, the shiny object is really easy in our industry. It is. Every day there's something new. There's a new way to, to in POS, there's a new way in, mm-hmm. um, in visual merchandising and you know all of it everything is a constant um, new idea uh, but be understand what's important for you how you what you want to accomplish and then build it from there um, so I, I agree like every day it's like how, how can I be more empathetic how can I also be curious about mm. maybe something new and how can I accomplish my goals today? I really do think about that, that it's not, um, it's not linear, that there's a constant ebb and flow of those things, but everyone in our industry, I think can think about those in their day. Definitely. Now, just to unpack that a bit further, you know, when, when we think about that, having that right balance and going back to our goals, uh, very important there is our decision-making process. So for our retail leaders, what would, where do you think we should really start uh, in terms of planning out and, and making the decisions? Where should we start and then how do we guide our decisions so that we, we maintain that right level of curiosity while also not losing focus? Hmm. So, you know, I think overarching when I think about starting to build it, what, are, what ultimately do you want to accomplish? What does your brand stand for? And so I'll just, I'll share a couple examples of my own experience as I have built some brands. So there's a brand in the US um, called Bonobos, Mm-mm. which may not be as familiar with, but they, it was a men's brand that uh, had the best fitting Chino pants for men in the industry. They designed like the perfect fitting pants. But they also, and they said, well, that's our platform. We're going to be known as the best fitting pant. And they added other product categories and they started to grow. And it was all 100% e-commerce, direct to consumer. But what they discovered, and well, so I'll back up and say that's their overarching mission was to be the best fitting men's pant in the industry. Okay, that's great. But then you, you, they started adding other product categories. And what happened is... Um, men started coming to the corporate office here in New York City and say, before I buy it online, can I see it? Like, can I touch it? Maybe I can try it on. And so they built this model of coming to the office and being fit for the the right size and then placing an order online. And that turned into a business model of saying, we we want the best product, but we also want the best service. And that may not be a lot of inventory. Um, and so I came in and helped them build a business model that it was about high touch service, um, finding you know, exactly the right size, choosing the right colors, 
but a business model that didn't carry any inventory. It was about an experience and then all the orders placed online. So the curiosity is what does the customer want from me? They wanna understand how, how their clothes should fit and then how to build the sale, how to build connection, focus on the one thing that you do well, which in this case was great fitting product and great service and a great company culture. And it's, you know, today it's a, it's a quite large um, business here in the US. Uh, and so I think every day we have those opportunities of what's, what is our overarching goal? What are the kind of pillars underneath it? How can we use you know, these kind of empathy, curiosity, and focus to accomplish those, but always staying true to, to your original mission? I, I love that. I mean, that's very true for, ev for every leader, right? Having that clarity of, of the vision for the company, for the, for the business, and, and the, also the mission. Why are we here in the first place, right? Now, I just want to uh, take a step back first, because since we're looking at the book uh, really through the lens of what you referred to as the, those with the accidental career in retail, right? So usually um, you, this, this was also, uh, easy, this can be easily thought of as those that started perhaps um, in, in retail sales, right? Like you mentioned, um, or even part-time sales, right? But then how do you transition from that kind of perspective to that retail leadership perspective and still also maintain that kind of uh, visioneering in, in, in the process and also mm. be able to deliver that right balance? And with considering that paradigm shift from operations to a big picture approach. Mm. It's, I have, I've met many people, hundreds probably, in the course of my career that were that part-time sales person who absolutely loved what they did and wanted to grow their career. And I said, then let's be the best version of you at that moment in that role and performing as if you had the next one. And to ev take every step along the way to say, well, what else can I do? Where else can I add value? How can I be the best um, and again, most curious version of that role. And then the, pretty soon they'll say, this is what happened to me. They're like, wow, like he really seems to be you know, energetic and engaged and wants to learn more. Let's give him more responsibility. And then pretty soon it's you know, an assistant manager role. And then same, you're doing your best every day. You're showing up early, you are, um, taking on extra responsibilities, you are exceptional with your customer, you're maybe learn skills like visual merchandising. And companies are aware of people who put in that extra effort. And then pretty soon, and you, you raise your hand and you say, I want that next job. And then I want the next job. And then I want more and more. And that's my story. But I, it's the story of many people who have this love of our industry who want to continue to, to grow in their career. And it's because there's no specific education for it, like we spoke about in the beginning, you have to kind of learn it on the job and choose great companies to work for that can help you get where you wanna go. But I, I find it also, it's, it's within yourself mm -hmm. to, to be the best version of whatever it is you want to be with companies that, that can give you that opportunity. I love what you just said about that. Uh, the, the last thing you said, it's, it's very important. It, it comes from you. It comes from within, right? To, yeah. to decide now what you're going to do to go beyond what you're already doing now and to go the extra mile for the company. And companies really, our retail leaders will definitely see that, right? So right. in terms of pursuing that growth and, right, and the, that, that um, expansion of, of capabilities for those that want to one, one day find themselves in that retail leadership um, position, right? Or that, that level of influence in retail, what should be the, the key ingredients that they should cultivate within themselves? Mm. You know, I think, um, you know, I speak about kind of the five important leadership skills that I think all all retail managers should have. Mm -hmm. And I, I reference leadership, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a leader to do these mm -hmm. things. And so the first one is have an optimistic attitude. And that is every day 
again, you kind of showing up with an optimistic attitude. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to engage. I'm focused on my business. I'm going to make this happen. And whether you're a leader, sales, multi-store leader, and that optimistic attitude gets you, it gets you really far. Um, I think telling people what you stand for, but also what you want. Uh, you know, great leaders tell people what their expectations are and how to deliver them. But maybe it's also about asking for what you need. You know, tell people what you are, what you want to become. And when you do that, then people are listening uh, because they know you're interested and then they have an opportunity for promotion. Uh, when you think about, you know, those that are looking to grow their career, there's one of those, those pillars of leadership that I say, be known as someone that, gets, that can get things done. Like you're handed a task and they know, you know what, Raphael's got it, don't even worry about it. Like he, he'll, he'll get it finished and it will be done at a high, a high level of quality. And to be that person who can just be known as someone that gets things done. And that sounds very simple, but not everyone has that reputation. So you have this kind of optimistic attitude. You're telling people what you stand for and what you need, and then you just get it done. You are always that one that can take that task, that take that task and grow it from there. And then, you know, of course, hiring the right people is always a great leadership skill and, and continue to make everyone feel important around you, you know, delegate and, and give those opportunities to those that, that want all of these things. And for me, that's a winning, that's a winning combination in any retail business. That is very true. And what I really loved about what you said also is that that leadership doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in a leadership position. And, and one thing I noticed uh, that's very common among the, the successful uh, retail companies, retail brands, is that it comes from their people having that strong sense of ownership of their brand as well. That it's, it's like they, they also own the retail business when they represent the brand. Uh, can you tell us more about how can that be cultivated by retail leaders among their people? And you're exactly right. It's, you know, there are brands, I think of brands like Apple, you know, that have really large teams, but they are teams of people who are highly engaged in the brand. You have a deep awareness of all the product categories. They're likely users of the product and can speak all day to anyone that walks in about any of the products in the store mm -hmm. and are incredible specialists, but they're also really engaged in the culture. And so I, I think you hire people who love what they're going to sell because you're always better if you, if you love what you're selling because yes. you, then you're energetic, you're engaged, you're curious, you're finding out more because then all you wanna do is share it with your customers. It becomes more authentic that way too. Absolutely more authentic. And then, so those brands, there are, and there are many, whether you think about um, Nike or, I mean, there's, I, I don't know what some of the big brands um, in Manila are every day, but I know that you have them, that you are very engaged in that particular brand. You're engaged in what they sell. You're, you, and then you want to share that information with everybody because it's kind of a, it's culturally ingrained in you. Now, speaking of culture, how do you really create that winning culture in retail? And more so importantly, especially in these turbulent times, how do you make that winning culture also resilient, uh, especially mm -hmm. in these uh, highly turbulent season of, of the pandemic? Oh, and, and that's been an honest challenge. You're right, mm -hmm. because sometimes if, if I go back and reference empathy, you, we've been in a situation where your team may have a lot of things happening at home and, and financial challenges or health challenges. And so being, starting with empathy builds culture because if you know that your leaders and your company care deeply about your experience, that's, that's empathy. And so mm. this idea of you build culture that way but then you also think about that sense of belonging and say, I want people to feel 
that they belong, that they're welcome here, their skills are welcome, um, maybe their high level of experience or low level of experience, everyone's welcome. And that sense of belonging on the team um, is kind of where that begins. I think about even though the challenges have been significant, every day set a slightly bigger goal and say, okay, great. Yesterday we did this much. So today we're gonna do that and a little bit more. Like every day you can just drive it a little bit further. And, and the pandemic kind of required us to say, you know what, maybe we had a, a very big goal that we were going to achieve in 2020 or even 2021. And maybe we can't achieve that big goal, but we can achieve these smaller increments every day. And that's a culture of winning. That's a culture of every day, we're gonna show up and we're going to do our best and we're going to win the day. And that may not always be financial is the other way I think about it, is that if you had a tough day at home because of the pandemic, but you had a great day at work, you know, that's, that builds culture in the business because then you look forward to going, oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Ron today, you know, at the store. That's, that's a way to build culture. I think about, you know, asking again, what's working, what's not working. How can we share that with our corporate offices and, and that level of engagement builds future business. And then the, the best part about culture in, in retail is that you celebrate people who do this well. And that's where pride comes from, is that you find those moments to recognize people who are doing great work. And you, you, you call it out. Maybe it's a morning meeting of like thanking someone for hard work. All of those moments just engage that, again, accidental to intentional because they've had someone in their business, a leader in their life, who recognized their hard work. And I can't think of any business that doesn't appreciate that. That is, that is very powerful, Ron. I mean, I love that, that it's not just about winning once, but actually, even if it means winning a little bit more each day, it becomes a, a routine in, in a way, right? It becomes a discipline or a way of life that we just keep on winning and we also celebrate those little wins each day. I mean, that's a great winning culture and that really builds resilience. Thanks for that, Ron, that's amazing. Now, when we think about building that resilience, especially in this time, right? Now that we, we want to move forward from, from what, what hit us in 2020, right? When right. we look into the future, would you paint us a picture of what's the future of retail that we should be building towards now? So I, I have this vision in, in my own head is that retail is, is the industry all around the world that will reconnect us as, as humans. It, it's, the, it's the industry that will bring us back together. And that in every part, whether kind of grocery, pharmacy, clothing, multi-brand, department stores, every opportunity to be in a retail business is reconnecting the world. And I, leading my own teams every day, every, there are customers that come in to my business, which is a women's clothing business, and say, this is the first time I've been out of my house. This is the first time I've bought new clothes in 18 months. This is the first um, in level, this is the first experience I've had that's not just with my family. And I think that's really powerful. I, I think we have that opportunity to be the most human, the most um, empathetic, the most engaged and reconnect us as a human race. Like that, retail can do that. And I, the future of retail is certainly an omni business. We know that e-commerce has grown at significant paces. So we know that it's e-commerce, but at its core, this is about human engagement, personal and personal relationships. And, and we, have, we can do that every day. I love that. That really is very powerful. Even with the rise of e-commerce or even some contactless transactions uh, being on the rise with the trend and impact of the pandemic, it still all boils down to 
that future or the very core actually of retail being about connecting with one another and going back to that essence of being one with each other. Uh, even if we don't, uh, even in this, in the retail setting where the customer might not be someone you necessarily know personally, yeah. but you get to connect with those customers, right? That's really powerful. Now, as we build towards that future and going back to the very core essence of retail, Ron, what would be your advice for our retail leaders? to not give up when it gets hard because this it's going to be hard. I think last year was very difficult, but this year, yes, the business is coming back, but it's still a challenge. There's still, there are still many obstacles to great retail today in 2021 mm -hmm. that we will overcome, but don't give up when it gets hard. Have that optimistic attitude that we know that it's tough, but if you show up with a smile and, and ready to take on the day, that you will um, kind of overcome some of those obstacles when it gets hard. And I, you know, I'll go back and say, like that, that celebrate the hustle and grit that you have, that makes great retail. And definitely take pride in that career because it's a very meaningful career in industry, right, Ron? Right, it's exactly what it is. And yeah. you, you know, to celebrate the fact that you likely work in a multi-million dollar business. You connect with thousands of people every year when you work in a store. You, you have this level of influence that you don't even know you have and be proud of it every day. I mean, that is really beautiful. And I think that's what really makes retail meaningful because you get to touch a lot of lives every day. That's a great opportunity, a great way to start each day. You're thinking that the next person that comes in right through the door of our store will be another life that I could touch. And that just makes retail much more meaningful. See, I love that. You and I think, think the same. Yeah, that is so true. And that's how we can really find that pride in, in the retail career. So when we think of retail pride now, Ron, can you tell us more about where we can get your book? Sure. So I uh, believe it's available on Amazon in the Philippines in ebook form. So I mm -hmm. think it's not in um, this. This is, I'll show again, the, the hard, this is the hardcover, um, which um, is a lot of fun to have if you had that opportunity. But if not, it's available on ebook. Um, hopefully um, on audio in the in the coming few, in the coming months, I should say, in the future. Um, but you can and always go to retailpride.com um, for me because there's other like videos and uh, I write a blog or other live events that that anyone can join um, and would welcome welcome subscribers at retailpride.com. That's great. And definitely we would not want to miss all those insights from your book. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Let's Talk Retail, Ron. We really learned a lot from you and it's really about taking that pride in the retail career and we're so much better for it. Thanks, Thank you Ron. so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And that's another episode packed with amazing insights and a very fruitful learning experience. Thank you so much again to our guest, Ron Thurston. And thank you also to our viewers for supporting Let's Talk Retail. Again, this is Raf Layosa, founder and CEO of RetailGate Technologies. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you in the next episodes of Let's Talk Retail. See you then.